Hi there everyone. Yesterday I did the tutorial for this naughty or nice and went ahead and showed you how to bridge that for traditional plastic stencil and by popular request I'll do this tutorial now for this adorable elf shoe turned into a two-part background. So I'm going to open a new project to start that. And on the left panel, you're going to go into images. This was in the free this week category, and I searched Christmas to narrow down the field a bit. Scroll on down several rows, and you'll find this shoe. Insert that image to your canvas. Now, as you can see in the layers panel, it is one piece. It moves around as one piece. The uh, ability to ungroup is not there because this is one layer. So we're going to make it into two. On the left panel again, grab a shape. I'm going to get a square and then place that directly over. Let's see, I'm going to make this a little bigger so you guys can see in the video well. I'm going to place that directly over that top part without touching on the bottom part anywhere. You want to make sure you're not hanging over these little humps right here and not touching into the tip here. So now I'll just draw a line through touching both of those items and you can see in the layers panel they're both chosen and I just drug my mouse over them to do that. Slice and then when you move this big box off the top you can see that I was able to capture that tip of the piece there. So we're going to go ahead and delete that, delete this extra one. And then I'm going to go ahead and change the color on these. Just makes it easier when you're grabbing parts out of the layers panel later. Make that red and grab some green for this. And then now they move separately. As you see here in the layers, they're two separate units but I want to be able to move them around together to create the stencil. I am going to close that gap a little bit though, just because I like the way it looks better. So I'm going to draw this line through here again and use the group function in the layers panel so that they now move together, but I'll be able to separate them later. And let's go ahead and bring in our stencil shape, a square, back on the left-hand side there. I'm going to turn that to white just because it's easier to see everything in the video that way. And for design purposes, I'm going to start with 5.25 inches. At the end, I will change that to 5.5. And, and then I'll resize this. I'm going to go ahead and make it 5, half an inch tall, or excuse me, half an inch wide and a little over three quarters of an inch high. You can see it went behind this stencil square because it was on my canvas before the square. So we're going to arrange and we're going to send this square to the back. So I clicked on my square. I'm going to send that to the back. And then duplicate some shoes. I always bring one off to the side of whatever I'm working with. Duplicate several of those. And then I am going to do some left and right booties. So I'll click on one of those and up at the top toolbar use the flip tool and we'll flip that horizontally. So now we have some left and right booties, which I'll again duplicate some copies of that. And then for this one, I'm going to do what's called confetti style, where they're just kind of thrown on there like you would toss confetti on a table or something. Not really any uh, pattern or anything to the placement just scattered around and I'm gonna just quickly move those around without messing with them too much just so that I can keep the video um, timely just gonna move rotate a few here and there so you can um, pause the video at this point and move your booties all around put them where you like the way they look and then come back in because I'm not going to um, like fill this up because I'll be here all day clicking on layers over here in the panel to show you the next step if I keep going. So now that I'm going to pretend this is all full, I like the way it looks. Um, I'm going to move my square off to the side, 
draw a box around all of those and group them. And I'm just doing that for a brief moment so that I can center them on here. Because what we're going to do now is change this square to our five and a half. And then draw that line through them, through both items. And we're going to go up here at the top, grab the Align tool, and center those booties on your square. Now that you've centered them, we're going to go ahead, draw a line through all of that, and, and uh, group that just so I can move it over and it'll all stay together. Now, I'm in the next part was going to go through the layers panel. I'm not going to be clicking over here on the individual items. I'll go to the layers panel and I'm going to grab all of the red pieces. So I'm holding my shift key down, going through the layers panel. If you accidentally grab a green, don't worry about it. Just click on it again. It will let you unclick it. So going down through there, I'm going to grab all the red pieces. And then we're going to use the weld function to turn them into one unit. I'm going to just glance back up through there, make sure I got all of the red pieces. And then at the bottom of the layers panel, we're going to choose weld. And you can see at the top of the layers panel now here, we have all of these red pieces. And if I click on that, let's see, I didn't get that. If I click on that, I'm able to move the red pieces and they all go as one unit. I want to put them back where I had them. Probably shouldn't have moved them around, but anyway. There they are. Okay, so now we're going to go through and all that's remaining, this square is still attached in our grouping. So I'm going to come up here to the top of this and ungroup. And that took our um, square out on its own again. We can hide that if we want. And we can actually come up where our red piece go. Red piece, we can hide the red piece. And then instead of going down through the layers panel one by one and grabbing those green ones, by hiding the others, we're able to draw a box around this and weld the greens together. Now we'll unhide those other two pieces. I'm gonna arrange and bring that to the front. Looks like our red went to the back, of course. Send that to the front. <clears throat> now, we're going to regroup this so we can duplicate this. And I'm going to need two copies of it, one for the green, one for the red. So in one of these copies, I'm going to get rid of, delete the green. And in the other copy, we'll delete the red. Draw your line through those two pieces and attach. So there's your red part. I sometimes will change it to red just because I know that's my red piece. And then on the other one, you draw your line through it again and attach. Now you'll, you'll see, let me show you another way. Let me undo that real quick because I'm going to show you that this, if I, uh, if I group and duplicate that and then ungroup this, ungroup this one. So. What I was just doing is I'll grab these two units and I'll attach them. Another way to do this, and you'll see this in videos also, is to grab your two pieces. So I've got my white square and my green here. Let's cover up that red. I could slice that out. And what that's going to do is give you the trash pieces in your layers panel. So I would need to delete this piece and I would need to delete this piece which would leave me with this piece with those cut out. That's why you can see the red behind there is because those shoes have actually been cut out of the square. The reason I don't typically slice is because if I change my mind and decide there's something about this that I don't like later after I've saved the project, in order to change the position of this, I would have to undo to bring back the parts, undo again to bring back the other parts, 
undo again to um, until I have the slice has not been done. So, and whereas this one over here, if I wanted to change it, all I have to do is click detach and move. So that's the reason that I typically do not use the slice button when it comes to that part. Again, it can be done. And let's see, I still have this pieces back here. So this was some of my trash pieces from that little example. So then this one here, again, you don't have to turn it green, but just so I know this is when I go to airbrush on, this is my green piece, this is my red piece. And obviously they're not green and red in real life, they're clear, but I like to do it in the decorating, or in the, excuse me, in the designing process. So we have these are attached, these are attached, and those would be ready to cut if you were happy with your design. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments.